Ristic Studies was originally printed as a common and nobody cared about it when the card came out. Now we've reached the point where people are willing to pay $500 for substandard copies of the card. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about Ristic Studies and Jumpstart and what's going on overall with the different markets in Magic the Gathering, specifically the oddities market is what we're going to be talking about today. So what's going on? You can see on the screen already that there is a Ristic Studies card beside me. Now, if you're not familiar with the card, it's been around in Magic for a considerable amount of time. It was originally printed, like even with the old school borders, long ago as a common card. I believe it was originally in Prophecy. And people just kind of looked at it and went, meh, the card itself. The funny thing is, is Ristic Study is essentially the best Ristic card in Magic the Gathering. But Ristic cards overall, just everybody went, mm, you know what, no thanks. So let's actually, let's take a look at what the card does. It's one blue and two for an enchantment that says, whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. The flavor text says, friends teach you what you want to know, enemies teach you what you need to know. So the Ristic concept was one where it's sort of reckless, quick magic, where you've learned to do something faster, but it's easier for your enemies to disrupt, represented by the fact that your opponent can pay to cancel out the effect. So you have a scenario where in almost every case, the Ristic cards were terrible, absolutely terrible. And when asked about the possibility of returning to the mechanic, what he thought about it, Mark Rosewater, the head designer for Magic the Gathering said, that's a nine out of 10 on the storm scale. The storm scale being the scale they use to determine what not to do again. So Ristic Studies is almost, not Ristic Studies, sorry. The Ristic ability is so high on that scale that we'll probably never see it again. And it's a pretty easily summed up in the concept of, check out this really cool thing I can do unless my opponent just says, no, um, you just can't do that. Basically, every Ristic spell and ability had a built-in counterspell that your opponent could just pay to trigger, which does, it doesn't feel good. But regardless, Ristic Study managed to shake off the whole, oh, I don't like that, and find a home in Commander, all right? So Commander and other locations as well that basically slowly but surely pushed the value of this card up. Obviously, in a multiplayer game, based on however many spells are being cast, you're probably gonna to get to draw some cards. So you know what, Ristic Study is a pretty solid, just put it out there and it either hampers your opponent's mana or draws you cards, and either way, not too shabby, right? So over time, these cards went up in value. If you're wondering why this is a rare now, that's because it went up in value. I don't really see any other reason for Wizards having printed it as a rare because the Jumpstart packs that they come in, which is the only printing of this that's rare as far as I know, I could be wrong about that, but as far as I know, it's the only rare printing of Ristic Studies. And it's basically just because it's a more valuable card. You know what I mean? So the card, the value of Ristic Studies has moved up to about 15 to $20. That's what a regular Ristic Study goes for, okay? So the ones we're talking about in this video, because there are multiple iterations of this and depending on your currency as well just to make sure we're clear on this i'm canadian so canadian money isn't worth as much as american money so i said that ristic studies are going for 500 dollars. if you go by american pricing it's like 470 dollars. if you go by canadian pricing it's like 600 and something dollars so i figured 500 dollars was an easy point to kind of terminate it at and there are multiple cards that are selling at this level like this isn't this isn't me going, oh, you know what? This could happen where they're selling for this. There, there have been multiple Ristic studies sold in the last couple of days, specifically these Jumpstart error Ristic studies. There are groups out there. I'm a part of at least one of these groups right now. I don't know. Sometimes the posts blend together. Either way, there are oddities groups out there which will pay for very rare magic items, including misprints. And different styles of misprints 
have different levels of desirability based on, there's all, all these different factors that come into the desirability of a misprint. If it's on a playable card, the misprint is worth more. If it's a rare misprint in terms of not the actual rarity on the card, but the rarity of the error, how many times has this error occurred? Is it unique? Like for example, in recent memory, one of the most mind blowing misprint scores has been the double sided commander deck where every single card has two different cards stamped on it. So you've got card backs with like card fronts printed on it. They're double printed. It's just, it's a whole amalgam of errors that all came together. And the, the commander deck I believe is sold for like tens of thousands of dollars. Like it's an absolutely absurd multiplier, but there are all these different factors that come into mis misprint valuation. Unlike normal magic markets, and by normal magic markets, I mean your Star City games, your um, like face-to-face, -face, Card Kingdom, TCG player, whatever you want to call it, eBay even has like a normalized sort of range. And that's just based on, you know, the normal, the normal market functions of supply and demand based across a large number of items being sold because there's tons of copies of all of these different cards. But when it comes to misprints, it's a much tighter market in terms of there's only so many people who are going to be interested in your misprints, but there's also, depending on how few copies of the misprints are, these people who are interested will have a large amount of money to lay out for these. So the price of these ones are determined by auction, right? It's, it's different with your websites that set up cards and sell them. They will arbitrarily set a price based on what they think the market will pay. That's how it starts, right? If you look at all the sellers originally when a set has not yet released and they're all using pre-release pricing, that is all just guesswork that will be basically moved around, determined, determined by a number of factors. One is how many people actually end up being interested in the card. Another is how much it actually affects the environment in terms of like, oh, okay, you know what, these cards are meant for standard, but they're not doing anything in standard, they're not doing anything in modern. Like, if cards aren't doing anything anywhere, they're just gonna go down in value, and the price is just gonna kinda settle into whatever it should be. But with the misprint markets, it's just auction only, right? Well, I guess, I mean, technically they can field offers, but generally the way the prices are determined are by previous auctions, things like that, to get kind of a, like a rough baseline, but there's very few to go by. And people can have like, if you if you have an auction from three or four years ago, how do you, like how much do you put in for inflation? There's all kinds of interesting factors that come into play when you're dealing with misprints. So these, two of these have gone to auction and one of them is sold for 470. The other is still on auction currently at 425. Now Jumpstart has a huge, amount of problems a huge amount of errors and misprints that i've seen already it's crazy there are entire jumpstart packs coming out where the entire pack is misprinted the whole thing is errors actually you know what if that's something you guys are interested in if you want me to do a video going over all the errors with jumpstart then if this video gets enough likes there's enough comments you know leave a comment saying you'd be interested in hearing about the errors with jumpstart and i can definitely do a video on that i don't know what level of interest there is in that sort of thing right now but overall there are a large number of jumpstart errors so i don't know if more of these heuristic studies are going to show up to push the price down but the type of misprint that's going on with this is also rare you may not be able to pick it out by just having looked at the card that i've had on the side of the screen while i'm talking but this is the image of the actual misprint, the error version, and it, the art is the biggest giveaway. It is missing particular colors. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, like, I'll, I'll leave the card there, but on the bottom half, I'll put the fully colorized version of the artwork, and you'll be able to see the differences that exist within them. Especially focus on red objects, if you wanna see the, like, the most obvious changes to me it's really like the red objects are the most vibrant in the regular artwork and then when it comes to this darkened out artwork you can see that it's missing particular colors now this is a less common sort of error so you combine that you take a less common sort of error 
you combine that with a genuinely actually playable card you can combine as well depending i don't know how much this affects it but we know this artwork's never coming back right the artist that did this art has had their uh, basically has been distanced from wizards of the coast so we won't be seeing any more versions of this particular printing which may also be lending overall right so you've got you've got a you've got a rare style misprint like you've got it on a desirable card the potential of something like this ever appearing again is zero because wizards won't reuse the artwork so these factors can all come in to contribute to this absolutely astounding price i find it fascinating that magic the gathering has been so successful that even the misprint market has all these high value misprints like it's insane what people are willing to pay for some of these misprints but i understand the enjoyability of misprints underneath i used to collect misprints more back when they happened less frequently as somebody who went through like i've been through so many magic cards in my life either sorting for myself or a store going through like tons of different collections i've seen so many magic cards so misprints would always stand out and wizards of the coast used to have a different policy where they kept their quality control much tighter and cared more about the end product that was coming out so misprints were very very infrequent and so you didn't end up feeling frustrated by them because they were super super rare but i mean if you take a look at the the older like the ixalan block and everything card quality had become pretty pretty poor there and honestly jumpstart it kind of feels like we might be returning to that. So if you're interested in hearing about the jumpstart errors, you want me to do a little parade of the parade of problems. That's a pretty good name for it, actually. We can totally do that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if you'd like to see that. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, share the video around. It really does help the channel. And if you want to help the channel even more and really love what I'm doing, I've even got a Patreon. You can get on board and be a part of the list of awesome names that have been scrolling by the screen here while I've been talking. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I will catch up with you very soon. But for now, goodbye!